All right, so we got what if the Emperor was resurrected Warhammer 40k lore. Now, you guys know it as a Warhammer new booty, as a Warhammer newbie. Uh, we know that the Emperor, he got like a thousand tubes coming out of his body like a porcupine. So, uh, that would be crazy if he actually came back. Let's get to the video. Get out. Hey, guys and gal. The Emperor is truly we back with Major Kill, y'all. But with him acting as the galaxy's most powerful vegetable lithium battery, he's not exactly an extreme A vegetable's mood. crazy. Contrast this with the emperor that was around for the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy, and it is a bit sad seeing what we have lost. But what if the emperor was resurrected and returned to his flesh and blood form? Uh -oh. How would that impact the setting, and would it actually even be a good thing for the Imperium? Before we get started, the annoying thing about getting or keeping healthy is that everybody is different. Oh. What works for some people is this won't work for others. High carb might decimate someone's waistline. Oh, this is ad. be perfect for buffing up someone else. So I partnered with Lumen today to use All the power right. of science. We're going to talk during the, the ad real quick. I think it will be a really Lumen good thing if he actually came back. In and out the thing of, is, right, bro, he, bro, I mean, he is right, bro. He is like a vegetable, then bro. He can't move a muscle. Bro, I think they're sacrificing like a thousand people a like day just, how many just to keep that machine running. My bad. Just to keep the emperor running. Like, you know, I don't want to get the beats in the afterlife. Like, bro, like, bro, bro, if he actually came back, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. And like, his like, like, bro, he came back in his prime, bro, he might get people to beat. I can't lie, bro. You have. So my Lumen app has oh, he's still doing it. He's still doing well uh, the ad. The more data it gets, the more personalized advice it gives. You're literally biohacking a shortcut into a healthier life. Lumen also isn't just like a gimmicky device. Also, bro, in a like, study, Lumen and obviously, like, big, whenever it comes to, like, lore, of, like, the Emperor, whatever, thing, like, obviously, bro, you know, like, across both devices. Come on, bro, he was the so goat. So to get your ass on track um, wait, and live I think a better, healthier somehow. life, then go to Lumen.me. Um, uh, we're coming back, we're coming back. And you'll get a cheeky 15% off your I'm still a Warhammer noob, okay? So don't blame me if I don't know everything. Today we'll go over what would happen if the Emperor was restored to life. After stating what we know would happen, we can then theory craft a bit about what course of action the Emperor could take. Also, quick shout out to Alex Christie for the amazing thumbnail art for this video. Oh, snap. Hyrule's version of this is available to download for free on my he, Yeah, he is a skeleton oh, now. let's get into it. Let's get into it. There are a number of potentially viable ways to bring the Emperor back to life, whether it be through technology, sorcery, or random convenient plot devices. You could also just unhook the Golden Throne and pray that you didn't just doom the galaxy. I'll probably make another video regarding the different potential methods of his resurrection, but it's important to note that the Emperor currently does not want to be returned to true life. Attempts have been made, with the Emperor himself often thwarting them. The leading theories behind why he doesn't want anyone to bring him back is A, they would probably butcher it and, and cause a lot of issues, or B, the Emperor that is on the throne in this undying state is more powerful than the Emperor ever was as flesh and blood. So a resurrection would actually reduce his power. As an example of oh. this, during the heresy, the living Emperor was able to project himself to Vulcan in order to encourage and give his son strength to survive Conrad and escape from him. That in itself is impressive, but in the current setting, Scaly Emperor was able to cure Gilliman of a primate killing disease from across the galaxy, then set fire to Nurgle's garden. Wow. Crazy. Oh. Gilliman remarked that talking to his father now was like talking to a star or. Okay, so like, how does that work though? Because he's just sitting there though. Like, like. Okay, so he basically just said that he's technically more powerful just sitting there and just rotting away basically while they have like a thousand like you know metal tubes connected to him like like he's some type of air conditioner like if i'm being honest with you like i don't know how that works obviously like you know it's it's warhammer it's fictional and stuff like that but like, i wonder like how that works like he he's he basically like major kill basically just said that he's more he he's technically more powerful just in there instead of like if they like reduce him to like his like original form and stuff like that so it's actually crazy it's me entity as opposed to the very impressive but still human emperor who we knew 10,000 years prior. So that's a bit of context about why there doesn't seem to have been a genuine attempt at his resurrection yet. But let's say for a second that the emperor decided that it was time to re-enter the fray or maybe Call was so intense with his resurrection attempt that the emperor couldn't stop him. Yeah. And then the emperor was perfectly restored to his pre-death state just before he went to go confront Horus and the vengeful spirit. Now a lot of you probably think that he would get up, oil up his glorious abs, set his flaming sword alight and then ram it down Abaddon's dick hole and then proceed to solo clap the galaxy's cheeks, but that would not be the case at all. The first issue is that the Golden Throne still needs to be sat upon and powered, with the Astronomicon still needing it to exist and the Webway Gate needing to remain sealed. So the Emperor would still be very much stuck on the Golden Throne. Nah, you're getting up, brother. You're getting up. <laughs> you're getting up. I can't, hey, yo, yo, yo. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. you bro, th there's thousands of souls being dumped into you every single day. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. You're getting up. Yeah. Especially if I'm in the line to get sacrificed just for him. And like one day magically he came back. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. You're getting up. You're getting up, bro. That's my, that was my alarm. But yeah, you're getting up. I can't lie to you. You're getting up. You're getting up, bro. 
I understand, like, you need a break. Like, you know, you just want to chill out, eat your popcorn, whatever. Nah, you're getting up. You're getting up. I can't lie to you, bro. Sure, he could now issue more direct orders and speak more freely, but his overall power would be diminished. Yeah, you get no that, more cheesy Gilliman saves or setting fire to Nurgle. There is the potential for all the worship he was now receiving to greatly empower him, but I doubt it would bring him to the same level as purely throne emperor. So the first order of business would be to get his ass off the throne. The setting of 40k is a lot more chaotic and less structured than 30k, which is something the emperor can use to his advantage. What I mean by that is in 30k, everyone was taken by surprise by chaos. Fate seemed really set. Uh, bro, I, I gotta and catch up with 30k, y'all. You just kind of had to cop it. The thousand sons were falling to the flesh change. Sanguinius was fated to die at the hands of Horus. The elder were absolutely useless. These things were set in stone in 30k. Whereas in 40k, destiny and fate are broken all the time. Gilliman was never supposed to come back to life, but he did. Likewise, no one foresaw the lion's return. Yvrain was able to undo the Rubik of Ahriman and return a few of the Thousand Sons to life, something that should have been impossible. Basically, mm. the point is that there would be some kind of plot device that could get the Emperor off the throne, most likely a combination of the Emperor guiding Call with instructions, whilst also getting the help from the Eldar. To be honest, getting Trezin to lend a hand as well wouldn't go astray. The Elder could help with permanently sealing the webway, Trezin could help with fixing the Golden Throne, and Kor would tie it all together with human science, and maybe, just maybe, the Emperor would be free to leave the throne and power it like he did before he attempted the webway project, just with his mind from afar. While they were undertaking this task, which would take a while, news of the Emperor's resurrection would spread like wildfire. Massive pilgrimages would be undertaken. The Emperor would send out his custodians on various different special missions, including finding and bringing the Lion and Gilliman back to Terra to speak with. Now, a point that some people make is that the Emperor's return could cause an Imperial Civil War, kind of like the idea of what would happen to our own Earth if Jesus came back to life. You'd have the people whose position of power felt threatened, so would denounce Jesus or the Emperor as a pretender, but then you would have the believers who would kill for their return Messiah. However, this civil war would not actually happen. Uh -huh. Firstly, because Gilliman already did a purge of the Imperium's upper echelons when he took- You know what? Nah. Because if that was the case, right? Obviously, like, he, he, he's using, like, Jesus as, like, an example, right? If- I don't think it would cause a civil war. In both scenarios. The reason is, right, people look at, and obviously I'm not comparing, like, you know, Jesus and the emperor. I'm like, like, those are two completely, you know, of course, like, those are two completely different things. But, like, what I'm saying is, let's say, like, somebody of, if somebody of importance, of that importance comes back, I don't think it would necessarily cause a civil war. Yes, it may cause confusion, because you're like, wait a minute, like, wait a minute, bro, you was just, you was just sitting there. We saw all type of skeleton, the hairline, disappear like magic, disappear like Houdini. Where did you even, like, wait, bro, how are you even standing up? Like, what? Like, bro, my cousin was, lit, was lit, bro, my cousin got turned into a blender. Bro, my cousin got used a as a nitro boost just for you to, just for you to get up right now? Or, or, like, are we serious? So, yes, here's the thing, though. And what's so crazy is, like, bro, I'm surprised and, like, and maybe I'm just wrong or whatever, bro. But that 1,000 souls thing, that just don't, that don't sit right with me, bro. Like, the fact that that guy needs a thousand, like, thousands of souls every single day to, like, keep him powered or whatever. I think that's what I've heard. Bro, like, that doesn't, I'm going to be honest with you. That doesn't sit right with me at all. So, guess what? You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I, I take that back. I take that back. It might cause, like, a civil war or whatever just because of, like, you know, he's getting dumped a thousand souls. He bro, like, people are... I think it's like thousands of people are sacrificing their lives or whatever just for him. So that might cause something. But it, to be honest with you, bro, nobody could even like step up to the guy. Uh, bro, he's basically, I mean, listen, obviously like, you know, all praise to the most high. You know, you guys know, you know, I'm, I'm a man of the Lord. But he's, bro, he's like Jesus in, 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 in this in this uh, franchise, bro. Like, bro, the emperor is basically like Jesus in this. And bro, he's like, bro, he's the head honcho, bro. He's the, he's the GOAT. So, like, if he was to come back, whatever, I mean, to be fair, bro, yeah, it will cause confusion. I think it will cause, like, a little, it might cause a civil war, but I don't think it's going to be, like, an evident, like, civil war or whatever. But it will cause confusion, though. Like, bro, if I'm just sitting down playing a game or whatever, and I hear a little rumble, I turn around, and I see the emperor just standing straight up, you know, just stretching his neck. Like, I'm going to be honest with you, I'll be a little confused, too, so. Man. 
so the Emperor's return would be pretty smooth, and secondly, the Emperor is powerful as hell and would have his custodies. Any dissidents could be wiped out by custodian kill teams or simply mind nuked by the Emperor. See? It just really wouldn't be a thing. Once off the throne, the Emperor would be See, dismayed. Nobody would even be able to touch him. As this rotted, corrupted, fanatical thing, the opposite of what he was trying to build. This would really be shattering. What would even be worse is that he would come to the same realization as Gilliman did. At this point, the Imperium's faith in the Emperor as a god was actually helping out a lot, not just because it was empowering the Emperor, but also because it massively boosted morale and safeguarded the Imperium from corruption. If he tried to start once again insisting that gods weren't real and everyone had to be an atheist, then Chaos would have a field day and could do Horus Heresy 2, Electric Boogaloo. Oh, like imagine snap. if your golden god emperor was just like, gods aren't real, but then you got attacked by demons and shit, you'd just cry and die. Yeah. But if you thought gods were real and as such, so were demons, you'd face down the hordes of hell like a true believer. I yeah. believe the emperor would have yeah. two main objectives upon exiting the golden throne. The first would be to reduce or even remove the Great Rift from the setting, allowing the Imperium to be made whole again. And secondly, he would be searching for the lost Loyalist Primarchs and potentially even attempting to confront the Traitor Ones. He wouldn't be surprised at the presence of the Necron since he's literally punched on with the Void Dragon before and would even see them as an opportunity to help deal with the Rift. I imagine the Silent King would be eager to talk with the Emperor, as the Biggie would represent a great chance to defeat the Tyranids. Bro, you, bro, hey, you know the warp, the warp gonna be bumping. Bro, when they get news, bro, like, bro, when they're watching TV in a warp, and they see, and, and, and you see, live reporting news, the emperor has stood up. The emperor has stood up. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. If I'm in a warp and I'm just chilling, just floating around, and I saw that on on, on a big 40 inch flat screen TV, I can't lie to you, bro. Bro, it's gonna start jumping like the block party, bro. It's gonna start jumping like the block party. I'm pretty sure. Wait, didn't the, I think the Emperor did use something. I, didn't he use, like, some type of magic to, like, make his kids or something like that from the warp, I think? That's why, like, some of them came out, like, all corrupt and stuff like that. I think so. Alongside the Silent King being an honorable and pragmatic leader, the Tyranids would be a big spanner in the works for the Emperor, something he did not foresee, whilst the hive mind would designate him as the ultimate prey, the number one target in the galaxy, not just because of his threat level, but to consume the DNA of the Emperor would likely allow some sort of obscenely fucked up Tyranid evolution that would most likely win them the setting. Chaos would be massively concerned by the Emperor and would be preparing multiple contingencies and greater demons to try slay him, or at least slow him. Abaddon would not be stoked about this, but his sword, Drachnian, would hunger to taste the Emperor's blood once again. Perhaps it would even try and influence or even possess Abaddon, setting up an epic Emperor vs. Drachnian rematch. There's a good Man, chance that the, the Emperor returned to the He do not want the smoke. Any still surviving living loyalist Primarchs would also return to the setting, as the Big E coming back would kick off the Warhammer 40k Endgame. Corvus, Vulcan, Lehman, and Jagadai could all return, with Rogel being a maybe and Sanguinius and Ferris being a hard no. In return, Lorga, Fulgrim, Perturabo, and even Amigon would also return to the setting in force. Oh, Perhaps snap. the Emperor and Magnus meeting could give the big red boy the redemption arc we've all been craving for him. The Yo, that's the that's the civil war that we want. That's the civil war that we want, bro. We, hey, bro, we want the sons to fight the sons. I'm going to be honest, bro, bro, bro. You got the you got the emperor and like, you know, the kids that like him and then you got the other kids that you got the you got the kids that got kicked out. Bro, Bro, that's the civil war that we want. Like that, like the little end, bro. That's the end game that we want. And bro, if Warhammer can have that, oh man, that would be absolutely, bro. Like a, that would be crazy, bro. No, 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 no. I'm gonna be honest with you. That would be fire. For drawing out Zinch's corruption and even returning Magnus. That would be fire. I'm gonna be honest with you. There is also the fact that it was stated that given enough time, the Emperor and Malkador could bring back dead Primarchs. So maybe the Big E works to return Ferris or even Sanguinius before he goes out to smack down with the entire galaxy. It's hard to say exactly what would happen as there are so many issues that need sorting, but I genuinely don't think it would just be a stomp. The Emperor took a couple centuries to conquer the galaxy during the Great Crusade, and that was a galaxy that was ripe to be conquered, with very few significant hostile empires to deal with, and the Emperor having all the Primarchs and Legions intact. Now he only has two Primarchs with scattered forces, facing up against a mighty Orc Empire, the Tyranid Onslaught, a supercharged Chaos, an Awoken Necron Empire, and we can't forget the mightiest foe of them all, the Tau. The Emperor was <laughs> powerful, but I think a lot of people don't realize that he isn't all powerful or an insta win. He couldn't just snap his fingers and infinity stone everyone's tits off. The dude got his hands dirty in the Great Crusade, charging in with claw, bolter, and blade. There were times where he was genuinely in a pickle and he needed a hand. One thing that is important to mention is the Emperor's attitude upon being revived. During the Great Crusade, he was full of hope 
hope for humanity. He was almost like holding himself back in a way as he genuinely saw a path to a true golden age of peace. In this new grimdark setting where there is only war, he would embrace that. He would see this Imperium as a thing that needed to be destroyed and rebuilt, but also as a useful tool. His rage and vengeance would be an unholy thing to witness. There would be no more mercy or compassion. He would seek to burn out the enemy with pure ruthless violence, likely burning the Imperium in the process, and from the ashes, he would rebuild mankind anew, free of dogma and superstition. Or perhaps he would embrace the Dark King and come to the realization so that as long as life persisted, so would evil, thus all life must be ended. It could really go a number of ways, but the odds of the Emperor being revived in the next 20 years are just about as high as me having a threesome with Anna Diamas and Marco oh, Robbie. Okay, 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 we got it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, yo, Major Kill, you need to be stopped. I'm gonna just keep it real with you. All right, now listen. He was right. They are like his decision could go like, but like knowing his like, okay. Here's what I'll say about this, right? Knowing the Emperor's attitude, he was so full of hope and he was he was basically fighting for like humanity. He was like the greatest threat for humanity, not to humanity for humanity and to be honest with you bro i think he'll probably just look at everything and be like you know what if everything's just too far gone i mean and bro like listen to like bro i've watched so many like lore videos on each faction and worlds and stuff like that over the bro it's been a crazy like five to seven days i'm gonna be honest with you bro if i'm the emperor bro and i come back and i'm just ready to go crazy i'm ready to you know save humanity I'm going to be honest, bro. I'm going to look around, and if it's not looking good, bro, I can't lie to you. I'm wiping everybody. I got to wipe everybody, bro. I'll, I'll wipe everybody, bro. I'll probably wipe everybody. The whole galaxy, all right, cool. It's, it's clean from evil, but at the same time, though, I mean, evil will always exist whenever you have humans and stuff like that. That's just that's just the truth, and that's, that's what it's like in real life, too. I don't want to get too, you know, dark down that road, but, you know, Listen, there's always a yin to the yang, bro. Always. Always. It's always the positive. Like, if you have a positive, there's always a negative, you know? And and it's how you handle the negatives. So, at the end of the day, like, he's right. You know, if if, if he does, you know, wipe everything down, rebuild everything, you know, like like a Madden NFL team. Um, And he does, and, and like, he do, like, I don't know, make new worlds or whatever. There will be more evil, you know, people. There will be more evil leaders and evil um um uh, primarchs and stuff like that there will bro there will be more so at the end of the day i, I don't know no knowing the emperor because you know me and, me and the emperor were cousins knowing the emperor he might just try to just thug it out and try to like save everything but i don't know i mean listen if i'm the emperor bro i'm laying down the big hammer bro everybody going out uh make sure you guys like the video subscribe to the channel if you guys enjoyed i'm gonna see you guys next time out and yo are, are you are you subscribed okay i, I, I was just checking just in case you weren't Peace out.